just on the, on the play. And Prime Minister, this morning in your testimony, you addressed the policing plan that was prepared by the OPS. And I, I believe you, uh, you stated um, we should read it, we should look at it, because it wasn't much of a plan. Is that, is that fair? Uh, that is my understanding of it. So, yes. sir, I'd like to pull the plan up on the screen, please. Uh, it's, uh, and Mr. Registrar, it's PBNSC CAN 407734. Thank you, Mr. Registrar. Uh, Prime Minister, is this the document or is this the plan you were referring to? I have not. Uh, uh, I have heard about this. I haven't ever actually okay. seen it. So. So, so, sir, what I'd like to do, so you've not read this. No, I have not. Okay. So I, I certainly like, have not read it on the 13th. Okay. And so I, I'd like to just, um, Mr. Registrar, I, I'd just like to walk the Prime Minister through the pages, not so he could read it because we don't have time, but just to point out that this is a heavily redacted document. So page one is the cover page. Page two is, a, is this signature page. If we could go down. Page three is a description of the situation and the mission. Mm -hmm. And then, Mr. Registrar, if you could please, please scroll down. Uh, the rest of this document has been redacted. So that's page four, page five, page six, uh, page seven, page eight. So, Prime Minister, you said we should read this plan. We can't. Uh, it's, your, it's within your legal authority to instruct your council to remove these redactions. For the sake of the, of the transparency of this commission, sir, would you consider that request? I object to that. Uh, on behalf of the Government of Canada, it's Brian Gover once again. This is putting the Prime Minister in an odious position. Uh, we had no notice that th they would attempt this uh, in cross-examination. These things require careful consideration, do not lend themselves to decisions in the moment, and uh, we maintain our objection. Uh, uh, Commissioner, sorry, sir. Uh, this was in our document list um, that we circulated within time uh, to counsel for the Attorney General. They had noticed that we would be putting this document, and the question is a fair one in response to the Prime Minister's testimony this morning that he said you should read it. I think it, it, it uh, is fair uh, in a sense, but I think what's being raised is it's a little more complicated than the federal government or the prime minister releasing. These, this is a police operational plan of the OPS involving officers from the OPS and from OPP involving strategy, etc. And I would be very surprised if the federal government would order its release without consulting uh, with the various police services. And I, I, I think that's the unfairness that's being referred to. And quite fa frankly, I agree. Now, it's having said that, he made reference to the plan, and there is an issue about reading it for sure. But I think the context is, is important here. So, so, Commissioner, with that, with, with your ruling there, and I thank Mr. Gover for his point, Prime Minister, can I put it to you this way? You said we should read the plan, but I think you would agree we can't. Uh, indeed. Uh, I, uh, I, as I said, I haven't read the plan, but we're in a situation where, uh, as can be imagined, uh, I have access to uh, unredacted information, uh, and what I know and my understanding of this plan uh, was, and I'm happy to testify to that, uh, that it was not a complete plan of engagement. And, 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 um, and, Prime Minister, and again, I, I think uh, I would like to raise this again. I'm looking to Mr. Gover in anticipation of his, of his reaction. As you know, there's a legal opinion uh, that over which solicitor client privilege has been asserted. We asked uh, Minister Lametti uh, to release that opinion, and in a public statement this week, he said he couldn't because he lacked the authority to. That would be up to his client, and he then clarified that his client is his governor and counsel. Uh, so again, for the record, sir, uh, and this has been an issue for all week, not just this morning, uh, would you uh, advise that that opinion be released in the interest of transparency? Mr. Commissioner, it's Brian Gover once again for the Government of Canada. Solicitor-client privilege, of course, is a very substantial right in our legal system. It's one that the Supreme Court of Canada has recognized as a constitutional dimension. 
I remind my friends that in this case, as the Prime Minister has said, Cabinet confidence has been waived for the fourth time in 155 years to provide evidence of inputs. We know that the decision note that was referred to in testimony by the Clerk of the Privy Council referred to the advice of the Public Service that that it was appropriate to invoke the Emergencies Act. In my submission, we need not go further with the inquiry and pierce the veil of solicitor-client privilege, setting what in my submission could be a, a dangerous precedent going forward. And one, this is certainly an issue that requires careful consideration and not one to require a prime minister to respond to in the spur of the moment. Thank you. Okay, well, I think uh, you have a refusal uh, essentially uh, by uh, council, so I think you're gonna have to move on. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. And, and, and so uh, I have one final question, sir. So uh, there has been a lot of discussion this week about legal thresholds and how they differ um, under the Emergencies Act on your, on your government submission than they do under the CSIS Act. And you testified about this this morning. I, I just wanna ask you, one question. The, the emergency was revoked on February 23rd, correct? Um, yes. We can, take, we can take my word for it. And, 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 and prior to that revocation, uh, there was a great deal of public debate and public discussion um, about, um, the, about the case for the emergency made by the government. Is that right? Yes. And, and sir, I, I put it to you that not until this commission has the government of Canada ever publicly communicated that the threshold for declaring a determining a threat to national security is different under the Emergencies Act than under the CSIS Act? Not once. Why is that, sir? It's in the first line of uh, the public order emergency section of the um, Emergencies Act that the governor and council can on reasonable grounds uh, declare a public order emergency if um, in their reasonable opinion, I'm, I'm paraphrasing obviously, the, uh, there are threats uh, to the security of Canada uh, and uh, it is a national emergency. Uh, that, that doesn't mention a CSIS threshold anywhere. Commissioner, I think those conclude my questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just before I go.